Hazel, where uh, where you were born and uh, where where you've lived? Well, uh, I was born in a little town called Jewett, Ohio, and uh, I stayed there until I was 18. Then I went to Worcester College, and the depression came along, and I had one year of college. And then I I went out. Uh, to a little college in Western Ohio. I only stayed a short time because I didn't have enough money and I went to Cincinnati to live for a year. I worked there at Kroger's main office and just wrote the paychecks. I mean, I wrote the envelopes. Imagine not typing them but writing them with my hand. And then I waited on table at a place called the Animal Museum and got my room and board that way. And then I made enough money that I entered Western Reserve, Cleveland College of Western Reserve, and I went there a couple of years. Was it uh, difficult for women um, to, in those days, to uh, go to college? Yes, it was. If you were married, they wouldn't hire you. So how many years did you teach? 31 Hazel? years. 31 years, wow. Mm -hmm. And what grade did you teach, Hazel? I taught three and four mm -hmm. for a long time, and then I taught four and five. I had gotten my master's in library science. I organized the library at Southern Local. So where did you get your library science degree? In, from Kent. You've been on this earth for a long time. Yes, I'll be 103 next month. Can you talk for a moment about the changes you've seen uh, in your lifetime, the things you think are are most impactful in terms of change, uh, the changes you've seen for women? Um, the changes have been very significant. I found out that the men teachers were paid more at a certain period. It wasn't based as much on their education as the fact that they were men, and they've got more money than we got. How did you feel about that? Naturally, I thought it was so unfair. The, the men were, well, that, at that time, they were being drafted into the Army, and they chose to get a job teaching to avoid going to the service. So we got men that were or anything but good teachers. For the last 20 years that I was teaching, my husband was superintendent of schools, so he was my boss. So the, uh, the workplace was, uh, we had to combat jealousy and things like that, but uh, that part of it, and I had to be very careful we didn't have electricity in our town. We didn't have it until I left okay. to go to college. And my mother used a washing machine where she had a, had a wheel. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we had this second car in town. That's second car and the first bathroom in town. And uh, it was my birthday, it was coming up on my birthday, and they were going to have a, a, a birthday party for me. And my father stayed home from work, and he stayed in the basement and pumped water into the tank. And all the children did that day, instead of playing games, they flushed the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> we had the second car. My father would take us to church. He didn't go to church, but my mother was very religious, 
and uh, he would take us to the church in this car, and all the people were riding along in their surreys, uh -huh. <laughs> and the horses were rearing up, and <laughs> they hated to see us come. <laughs> How, how do you think, I mean, when you were going to school as compared to when you were teaching, uh, how, how do you think things changed in terms of education? Somebody had left money to our school and um, uh, with the understanding that there would be no dancing. So when we had our parties, we just played games. I wanted to dance. And my cousin came to visit me. I mean, and she said, they're doing something called the Black Bottom. You know, like that. Mm -hmm. We're doing the Black Bottom in the city. And she was showing it to me. So that day, at recess, I was showing the girls how to do the Black Bottom. And the janitor, saw me do it, and he reported me, and I was expelled for a day. Oh my. Have there been other uh, changes uh, in society that you think are very significant in your lifetime? I think what people consider wrong now, I mean, then, are not, is not considered wrong now. Mm -hmm. Manners, certain things. Mm -hmm. Were manners really important in your family, uh, to your mother? Um, like table manners or that kind of thing? Yes, I think, I think the thing that disturbs me most, I, when, when I got married, and the first thing I insisted upon when I got married, was my husband would serve. And we that's what we did absolutely all the time. We never passed any food. Just I put the meat in front of him mm -hmm. and I would serve maybe the salad. Mm -hmm. And my children grew up with that. My daughter wouldn't even know that I that we did that. Her husband wouldn't wouldn't condone that. Uh -huh. So that has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. Styles have changed a lot too, uh, Hazel. Right? Can you talk about style a little bit? That's that's what I think that's changed a lot. I would never have gone to church without a hat and gloves. And so we went, our first trip away for any length of time was when we went to Arizona. And we went to a church and I got dressed up with my hat and gloves. I got in the church, I mean we were coming in the church, and there was a whole load of senior citizens they all had on their gloves and their hats. We got in the church, not one soul, but these senior citizens were dressed that way. <laughs> I have never worn a pair of gloves at church and a hat ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I was cured. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I just, now I'm a senior citizen and I won't be caught dead because it was looking like that. <laughs> uh, what about pants? When you worked, when oh. you taught, did you Oh, like, did you wear never pants? wore pants. Okay. Oh no. Um, did you still work when you had children or did you stop working and then go back um, after? I couldn't get a job because when I was married, you know, at that time, I couldn't get a job. And then when I did get a job, that was they, I don't know what period they were hiring married women. And so I got a job there in the town, a half a day, teaching art. 
And that's how I started teaching back again. And then the next year, I got full time. I was teaching three and four. My daughter was born. Then, I mean, she was just a baby. And, uh, and, my, and I had a son who was three years younger. My sister-in-law, we lived in the same, well, we lived upstairs in a big house mm -hmm. and she had a restaurant below and we had an apartment up above and she took care of the children while I taught. Is that very, fairly unusual at that point, Hazel? In our system, we had some married women who were teaching and their husbands were also teaching in the same system. My husband was too. Mm -hmm. He was teaching in the same system. Um, but they didn't have any children, so it was years later that there were a couple that had children. So you were fairly unusual then yes, for that time. it was unusual. Anything else you want to tell us about? When I was a hundred years old, I decided that I bought a new car. So my son-in-law said he'd meet me there at the garage and look it over. And I thought, I'm not going to pay attention to him. I just went in early and bought the car myself. <laughs> I bet when you were growing up, people didn't go to restaurants oh, a yes. lot. Yes, we just sort of take it for granted now. And um, I have a friend, and she does too, um, who cooked all her life, then her husband died, and she has flowers on the stove instead of using it for cooking. But she won't cook, she doesn't. And so I went to visit her. She didn't have anything to eat in the house. I mean, we didn't eat anything. So one morning we had wine and um, uh, cupcakes. Somebody had brought in cupcakes <laughs> and that was our breakfast. And you would have never done that when you were young? No. No one. And that's one thing. When I was growing up, a restaurant was unusual. I mean, you would have maybe one restaurant, but we didn't even have one in our little town. It was a treat if we went to a restaurant. Now a, a typical date would be going out to eat at a restaurant or going and seeing a movie. What did you guys do? When I met my, my husband, uh, I was in Kent. I met him there. and. We didn't go out to eat because it was during the Depression and he had no money. I mean, we didn't go out to eat. He'd walk me home to my, where I, did, I, I didn't stay in a dorm. I stayed in a house. And so we just walk home and He'd kiss me. <laughs> we never went any place, any shows or anything like that. He just didn't have the money. He had such lo so little money that at the end of the of the summer, um, he opened the back end of the car, and it was filled with empty peanut butter jars. He had lived on peanut butter sandwiches all summer long. He was a math teacher and a coach. In those days, they coached, if they were a coach, they coached everything. Mm -hmm. Football, basketball, everything. And he even brought home the uniforms and I had to wash them. 
And of course, I didn't have a dryer. You hung them all out on the line to dry? Put them in the basement where we had a furnace, mm -hmm. and everything was dry there on the either outside or uh, mostly in the basement where it was nice and warm and clothes lines down there. Oh my. We really appreciate it, Hazel. Thank you so much, and Joe. Really appreciate it.